A couple of weeks ago, I blood tested for the fifth time in 2022. So with that in mind, what's my biological age? So we can see that data here. This is using Dr. Morgan Levine's phenotypic age calculator as an index of biological age. And note that if you have data for these nine biomarkers, you can calculate your own uh, biological age using Levine's test, and that link will be in the video's description. So when entering the data for these nine component biomarkers, I get a biological age of 34.0 years, which is 15.6 years younger than my chronological. Now note that my biological age could be a little bit less. Uh, that's because Quest indicated that my high sensitivity C-reactive protein measurement was less than 0.3 milligrams per liter. So it could be less than that, as we saw in an earlier video, but it can't be more than 0.3 milligrams per liter, at least for this test. And besides me entering data into uh, this Excel spreadsheet, if you're interested in looking and seeing uh, screenshots of my blood test data, all of that will be included at the end of the video. All right, so this is just one blood test. For more context, let's have a look at biological age results using Levine's test since 2018. And I have 20 blood tests over that time period as shown here. So we've got Levine's biological age on the y-axis plotted against time on the x. So from 2018 to 2019, I tested three times. And over those three tests, my average uh, Levine biological age score was 36.1 years. And then with uh, six blood tests in 2020 and six in 2021, an average of 35.6 years in each of those two years. All right, so what about 2022? Thus far, over five tests, my average Levine's biological age is 33.9 years. Now, besides just looking at differences for average values year to year, we can compute whether this is a statistically significant reduction or not by using a two sample t-test. And when I do that right now, it's a borderline significant biological age difference, 2021 versus 2022 with a p-value of 0.05. So if I'm able to keep the biological age score uh, less than 35.6, I would expect that this would be statistically significant. So let's see if I can uh, keep it up or <laughs> keep it lower uh, for the next couple tests. So this is one way of looking at the biological age score. Another is by looking at the difference between chronological age and biological age. And prior to 2022, my average reduction, chronological age minus biological age, was about 12 years, so 11.9 years to be specific. And that was over 15 tests prior to this year. So thus far in 2022, we can see that the average chronological age minus biological age reduction was greater than 12 years in each of the five tests with an average reduction of 15.3 years thus far for 2022. So off to a good start in 2022. Now, what I haven't shown you yet is how good is this metric for its correlation with chronological age and its association with all-cause mortality risk? So first, starting with the correlation data with uh, chronological age, we can see that that was evaluated in two separate studies. First in NHANES 3, which included about 10,000 people, and the correlation for Levine's biological age test with chronological age was very strong at 0.94. And then it was also tested in another study, NHANES 4, which included more than 11,000 people, and that correlation was 0.96 for Levine's test with chronological age. And we can see this visually represented here. So we've got Levine's phenotypic, phenotypic age score on the y-axis there. And then that's plotted against chronological age. And then we can see that very strong linear correlation for Levine's biological age score with chronological age with the red line. Now note that Levine's chronological age correlation of 0.94 to 0.96 in two separate studies is as good as the best epigenetic clock for its correlation with chronological age, which is the Horvath ep epigenetic clock. And this data is here, and I went further in depth into my own uh, Horvath uh, epigenetic age in my last video. And if you missed that, it'll be in the right corner. So what we're looking at here on the y-axis is DNA M age. So this, this is DNA methylation age, or more specifically, epigenetic age using the Horvath clock. And that's plotted against chronological age. And then we can see a lot of different colored circles. So this is a multi-cell and tissue uh, clock. Uh, including cells from uh, breast cells, buccal cells, or cheek cells, brain, colon, cord blood, dermis, or skin, and so on. So when looking at the correlation for Horvath's epigenetic clock with chronological age, we can see that that correlation is very strong at 0.94, which is very close or identical to Levine's biological age test for the blood-based biomarker panel. So what about all-cause mortality risk? How is Levine's test related to that? So here we can see that an older biological age using Levine's test is associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. And that's what we're looking at here, all-cause mortality. And in this study, it was uh, more than 11,000 people. 
And we can see that for every one year increase for biological age using Levine's test, all cause mortality risk increased by 9%. As you can see, that hazard ratio is 1.09. So that's a 9% 9 increase. And more specifically, note the 95% CI or confidence interval, 1.08 to 1.1. So it's completely above the hazard ratio of one. So we've got a statistically significant effect. Now, this effect was also true uh, regardless of whether it was in young, middle age, or older adults. So we can see that an older biological age using Levine's test was significantly associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk of 13%, 10%, and 8% in young, middle, and older adults, respectively. So what about disease-specific mortality? So an older biological age using Levine's test was associated with an increased risk of death from heart disease, cancer, chronic lower respiratory disease, but not cerebrovascular disease, so we're going to skip a red arrow there, diabetes-related mortality, influenza or pneumonia, and interesting, in, interesting, sorry, interestingly along those lines, in a study published last year, an older biological age, more than a decade before the uh, pandemic, was associated with an increased mortality risk in COVID-19 patients. So having an older biological age, more than 10 years before being infected with SARS-CoV-2, those people had an increased uh, mortality risk. And then last but not least, an older biological age using Levine's test is associated with mortality related to kidney issues, including nephritis or nephrosis. Now, note that Levine's test isn't the only blood-based biomarker panel that can assess biological age. And I've shown this in other videos, but aging.ai is another one that we can use. And this, this too is free to use, which is, which is a benefit. So aging.ai is strongly correlated with biological age, and in its case, it doesn't include chronological age in its model, whereas Levine's test includes chronological age. So as I mentioned, it's free to use, and you can use it there uh, at aging.ai. Uh, it's at aging.ai, very simple, straightforward. And the data that I'm going to show refers to aging.ai 3.0. There are a few other iterations, 1 and 2.0, but this is aging.ai 3.0. So it includes 19 biomarkers or 19 input parameters. And these are blood biomarkers that are commonly found on the standard chemistry panel and complete blood count or CBC. And those two tests together uh, are about $35 uh, USD. And when you include uh, high sensitivity C-reactive protein, it comes out to about $80 to measure both uh, uh, the Levine's test and aging.ai or for just aging.ai without C uh, CRP, high sensitivity CRP, $35 USD. So relatively affordable is what I'm trying to get at. All right, so aging.ai is uh, strongly correlated with chronological age. As shown there, it has a correlation of 0.8, not as strong as Levine's test or Horvath's test, but still stronger than some of the um, best epigenetic clocks, including Hanum's test, which again, I covered in my last video, which has a uh, correlation of cr with chronological age of 0.68. So 0.8 for aging.ai is pretty good. All right, what about all-cause mortality risk? So biological ages that were younger than their corresponding chronological age were associated with reduced all-cause mortality risk. And note that this study and all of the earlier studies that I referenced would be also in the video's description. So just to highlight that, looking at data, this was shown in a Canadian uh, cohort. So people who had aging.ai ages that were more than five years older than their chronological age, as shown there, had an increased all-cause mortality risk. And then conversely, people who had uh, aging.ai biological ages that were more than five years younger than their chronological age had a significantly reduced all-cause mortality risk as shown by the green arrow. And these data were basically replicated in, an, in a U.S. cohort. NHANES, as shown there, for older biological age, increased all-cause mortality risk. And conversely, younger biological age decreased all-cause mortality risk using aging.ai. All right, so what's my aging.ai age for test number five in 2022? So here are the data for the 19 component biomarkers. If anybody wants to double check the, the numbers, they can just go to aging.ai, put in my data and see what they get. And note that this is using the North American data set, which I use for uh, every blood test uh, to be consistent. So when I enter these data into, into aging.ai, I get a predicted age of 31.0 years, which is 18.6 years younger than my chronological. So just like we did for Levine's test, this is only data for one test. So for more context, let's, let's have a look at aging.ai results since 2009. I have data that goes back a lot farther uh, than Levine's test data, and I have up to 35 blood tests over that time span. And that's what we can see here. So uh, early on in 2009, I was going to the doctor to get my blood tested. I was only going about once a year. So from 2009 to 2013, I only have three blood tests as shown in purple. And we can see that my aging.ai age was 32 years. 
And then in 2016, I started having blood test kits sent to me in the mail, and then I'd bring them to the lab, whether Quest or LabCorp, and then I'd have them draw my blood and then send the blood out for analysis. So skipping having to go to the doctor to get my blood tested. So over that time span from 2016 to uh, 2021, I blood tested 27 times with an average aging.ai age of 29.9 years. So what about 2022? Thus far in five tests, my average aging.ai age is 29 years. So from this, we can see that my aging.ai age is consistently in the 29 to 32 year range, regardless of what my chronological age was during that time span. So I've mentioned this in, uh, in earlier videos in quantifying bio biological age videos. Are there weaknesses in my data? Am I missing something potentially? And if there is a weakness in my data besides creatinine of 1.04, and I think that's an easy fix though, a little bit more complicated may be the total cholesterol story, which as you can see, mine there is 133 milligrams per deciliter. But it may not be what you think in terms of uh, how it relates to all-cause mortality risk and its age-related changes. So uh, the total cholesterol story, and this will be in my next video, the total cholesterol story that I'm going to present involves DHEA, DHEA sulfate, testosterone, and cortisol. So in the interest of time, I'm going to end that there. We'll see that in the next video, and I'm hustling to get it done. I, I expect to have it uh, on, on my channel probably by Wednesday at the latest. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And uh, before you go, discount links. Uh, if you're interested in measuring your epigenetic age using Horvath's, Hanum's, and Dunedin Pace, I've got a discount link in the video's description for, for that. Uh, if you want to quantify your oral microbiome composition, and note that I sent out my second sample after my first uh, biohacking the oral microbiome video uh, a while ago. So my second sample is out for analysis, so I should get that data back any day. So I'll make a video on that once I get the results. If you're interested in measuring your own oral microbiome, that too, a link, a discount link will be in the video's description. If you want to track your diet, as I do with Chronometer, got, we've got a discount link for that. Or if you want to support the channel, uh, you can do that with the website, Buy Me A Coffee. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.